Danny Segura for MMAfighting.com here in New York City. I'm here with Gregor Gillespie, who will be taking on Kevin Lee at UFC 244. Uh, Gregor, first off, uh, welcome back. It's been a while since we've seen you in action. I believe last time you fought was earlier this year in January in Brooklyn. Um, first of all, why, why the break? Was it you know, perhaps not getting the right opportunity or where you just wanted to take a break, dealing with injuries? What, what went on there? Well, I mean, I fought in January and then uh, I help out with some wrestlers. Um, who I like to watch the end of their wrestling season. And then the March, middle of March is uh, the NCAA wrestling tournament, and I'm not missing that. I missed that two years ago for a fight in Buffalo. I'm not missing another one of those. That was the one NCAA tournament that I've missed since 2006. And I'm not missing, it's like the highlight of my year, and I'm not gonna be trying to go there, train while I'm there, hustling back. I'm not doing that. I don't, once training camp starts for eight, eight weeks, I don't leave. So I didn't want to schedule anything uh, in that time period. And my neck was a little banged up after the January fight. So I healed up, enjoyed wrestling season. Yeah. And then uh, we were waiting for the right fight. So uh, did you did you regret missing that tournament? Is that like a sacred thing for you? All right, so my first NCAA tournament was 06. That's the first one I wrestled in, yeah. Oklahoma City. Uh, and then every subsequent year after that, I had made it to as a participant for four years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, starting in 2010 was the first year that I was no longer eligible to compete in it. So 2010, all the way up to 2017, I was at, and I missed 2017 because yeah. of the Buffalo fight. That was the Cormier uh, Rumble Johnson fight. Uh, I was on that card, missed that, and then I made 18, 19. So I've missed one, I don't know, 15 years or so. Yeah. Yeah, not a bad record. No, but I mean, it was a great tournament that year. Uh, Nick Piccinini, who was one of my little Protégés, it was his first time All-American, and I missed that. It was, yeah. you know, it would've been nice to be there. Yeah. So um, you you had called out some people uh, before this fight w was booked, Anthony Pettis, sure. um, as well as Paul Felder, both strikers. Now you're fighting uh, Kevin Lee, more of a grappling-based fighter. Um, yeah. are, are you happy with the matchup that you end up getting nonetheless? Still a pretty big I, name, right? Yeah, I said I would've fought anybody in the top 10, and Kevin Lee actually at the, at the point in time when we agreed to make the fight happen was sixth or seventh. So, I mean, it was the perfect spot in the rankings, I thought. Um, I mean, matchups are, who the hell knows where the fight's gonna take place. Yeah. Sometimes you see two grapplers who this turns into a stand-up fight. Sometimes, you, you know, you get a lopsided fight where you expect it to be on the feet and one guy takes a guy down and never lets him out. So you you never know. I'm, but I'm happy with getting a top 10 guy, yeah. yeah. That's what I, that's all I asked for. And the guys that I was calling out when I made those two call outs, um, those were more to show the people that were giving me a hard time about not fighting that it wasn't on me. Yeah. I was trying to fight. I just didn't have the right matchup. Not, you know, stylistically, but the right matchup numbers wise. Yeah. So, and then the UFC was very helpful in getting that fight arranged and especially here at MSG. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And how important was that for you? Because fans have been claiming for you to get one of these top guys, one of these bigger names for a bit now, and you've been looking good uh, throughout your UFC career. Sure, and I mean, I wouldn't say that was, a lot of people, you know, like to tag stuff on, on Instagram and whatever. Give him a top 10 guy, give him a top 10. Until this fight, I hadn't asked for a top 10 guy, so that was on me. Yeah. You know, I'm sure if I would have asked for it, they probably would have given it to me. The UFC has been more than generous, you know, with kind of pushing my career in the right direction. Yeah. So. And, and I know, uh, you know, especially I, I saw you fight in Brooklyn and uh, you didn't really want to call anybody out. That's not really part of what you do. But we've seen, you know, you, you took to social media and you called to. out those fighters. You yeah. felt like you, you had to do that? I had to, yeah. I mean, because a lot of people were, were saying, you know, he maybe if you fought more than once a year, maybe if you finally took a fight, maybe. And I was just trying to, you know, let people know that, look, I'm trying. I, and yeah. the, the two guys that I called out were at that point in time were the only two that didn't have fights. Yeah. So what, call someone out that had a fight booked already? You can't do that. Right. So, you know, excuse me, I called out the two guys that, didn't have fights. And uh, back, back to your opponent, Kevin Lee. Um, obviously, you know, very good grappler in, in the division. What do you what do you make of him as an opponent, and, and how he matches up against you? Um, yeah, I mean, again, I prefer not to talk about yeah. my opponents. Um, I think anybody in the top ten, I would have been happy with. I think Kevin. This, I'll say, obviously, he's fought some really tough guys. He's got some good experience. Um, I don't have to explain that. You know, anyone who's yeah. watched any you know amount of UFC, they know he's tough. He's gonna be a tough fight. All right, Greg. Well, I'm looking forward to it. That's going to be a great fight. Best of luck.